So this is my brand new 14,000 pound capacity tilt deck trailer. I've needed one for a long time. It's 20 feet long, seven feet wide. It's got four feet of stationary or dead head deck up here that doesn't tilt so, you, so I can haul buckets and you know whatever else. It's ideal for hauling small equipment. It is made by Great Northern, who happens to be not only family owned, but my family. My sister, her husband, their partners, They've been at this a long time. They've got this thing down. Nate made multiple trips to their shop, filming, caught the whole process, and we have that edited and reduced and ready to show you right now how a trailer like this springs into reality. We get a lot of uh, kids in out of the area uh, schools, UCC and the various high schools locally. Uh, they come in the door with a general knowledge of how to turn a machine on. Uh, they know nothing about production welding. And we get them started building parts, very simple parts at first. And they turn into fabricators. I, I can go show you advanced fabricators on the floor that have been with us for five years or less that started with nothing and uh, just had a good aptitude, you know, smart guys, and, and we taught them how to fab, and, and then some of those guys make their way to North Star and build the larger projects that we do up there, like asphalt equipment, what have you. Well, this is me right here behind the camera, and this is my Uncle Jack and my cousin Nick, and Tammy is not in the shot here, but I've known that these guys have been in the fabrication and in the trailer industry for a long, long time, but I never knew all the details of how that came to be. So while I was here filming the trailer, I sat them down and put some mics on them to learn some of that story. In 1984, there was a recession going on. I had lost my job and met up with a buddy who wanted to start a scrap iron company. started the steel outlet in Roseburg in 1984 and uh, when you when you're scrapping iron you find usable stuff that people want to use so we started a, a used and remnant yard and then when people would come in they'd say hey you know can you give me some new steel so pretty soon we're stocking new steel anyway through the years we developed a, a pretty nice little uh, retail steel store and of course that put me in touch with all the fabricators in town and I became friends with a lot of them and I ended up buying into a fab shop in the mid 90s uh, called Normstone Welding, which uh, my new partner and I changed the name to North Star Welding. So where are we, oh, what are you doing, Jim? I was just ducking into my room. Where are we at, Jim? Where are we at? We're at Glenbrook Nickel. <laughs> and we own that <laughs> to this day. Uh, in 2005, we were looking for a product that we could add uh, so that our fabricators at North Star would have something to do between large fabrication projects. I mean, we would come to the end of a project after working six days a week, 10 hours a day, and uh, it may be a month before the next project started, so we'd have to lay these guys off. And in that process, we'd lose good people. So in 2005, we decided to start the, uh, the trailer business, and uh, we did, and now the tail's wagging the dog. <laughs> it, but it has worked very well for keeping fabricators busy. Uh, we haven't laid anybody off since that day.
I would advise people that are going after a trailer to kind of analyze how often they're going to use it. You know, if I'm a, um, a farmer that's going to use my trailer every single day, uh, my need for quality is going to be different than a fellow that is a homeowner that maybe uses his trailer four or five times a year. So you don't need to go spend a whole bunch of money on a, an expensive, well-built trailer uh, if you're going to only use it minimally. Because the trailers that are, are built, uh, I hate to use words cheap, but with less quality, they're a high volume. I mean, some of those trailer manufacturers are building 50, 60,000 trailers a year. We're going to build a thousand trailers this year. So we're a small fish in the big pond. Uh, and we really specialize on the custom side, uh, making something other than just stamping out a product uh, like they do. This is the main frame of the trailer, and it's just about done, as you can see. And while these guys have been working on the trailer, in another bay of the shop, a guy has been putting the rails together. And the rails are the edges of the tilt. They make up the long portion of the deck of the trailer that tilts. And they're a complicated part. There's a lot going on. I had never set foot in a fabrication shop like this before, so I was really enjoying myself watching everyone work, and especially seeing all the different jigs and systems that these fabricators had come up with and were using every single step along the way. There's a lot of neat tools. Um, you've probably noticed those overhead welders, big fab tables and carts and vices and sawhorses and some really big cranes that I didn't get a good shot of, but all of it really well um, thought out and set up. The craftsmanship, of course, was really impressive, but I think I was just as impressed with all the systems and planning that must have gone into getting the manufacturing to work at this scale. Uh, like you probably noticed, the trailers are assembled from a pallet of parts that were built in different bays of the shop on different days, and a lot of them are, are custom, you know, to specific specifications from the customers. Check this out, everybody. I'm at Great Northern, and they are putting together this little mini, it's not too mini, but in the world of self-loading log trucks it is, this is a self-loading log trailer. It's not just the same thing over and over and over, although they certainly do have, um, you know, regular trailers. Like, like the one we're getting here is pretty standard. Now, change of topic slightly, you heard Jack talk through the history of this business and how it evolved over the years. Well, one major evolution over all those years was this guy. This is Nick, Jack and Tammy's oldest son, that makes him my cousin, who, as you can see, has been involved and a part of this from day one Man, and still boy. is Forklift to this day. Forklift operator here in the bacon. With lumber and woodwork, you're always adjusting for wood that's like doing its own thing. Is steel 100% straight no. and true from no. the shop? No, <laughs> no, and sometimes you get bad steel. Sometimes we'll get chunks that are bad enough, the guy will go to make it. Especially if you're having a bad, a bad day already, like throw it out. We're, not, we're sending this back, it's too twisted. Uh, because I mean, but there's certain stuff that's tougher than others. So like the subframe on the tilt, that we built for you, it's channel. Channel can be tough. So like when we're building a whole trailer out of channel, especially as they're going through welding in the cross members, you'll see them clamping the top or the bottom and they'll, you'll see them going down it with a level 
making sure it's straight with the world because otherwise the channel can be very twisty and so when they're when they're when they're locking it in with the cross members they're going down making sure that they they have it straight um, tubing like tubing's good usually if you have a twisted piece of tubing you're just throwing it away because that it's pretty straight um, but like structural like channel i beam can do it as, sometimes not as bad it's it's mostly channel but yeah i mean it, it can be twisted it can be bent it can be all kinds of stuff yeah and if it's too bad we we will send it back because at some point you're going to either not be able to get it straight or you're going to waste a ton of time trying to get it straight so right uh, and and you know it, we, we try not to make our vendors mad so if it you know, if we get a 40 footer in and we can chop it into some usable length, we'll do that. Many, many years ago when we started the trailer business, we hired a fellow named Jim Lyles who had been in the trailer business himself for many years. Great guy, had a lot of knowledge about uh, what structures worked well and, and how to build a, a really nice trailer. And so we, we've had Jimmy with us all of those years and I give him full credit for where this product line has gone. Uh, we have a team of people who design these things, but Jim Lyles is the foundational guy. The 14K tilt bed, is probably one of our most popular trailers. Uh, until the 16K stuff came around, I would say it was the most popular, no doubt. Uh, and our 16K tilt looks exactly like the 14K tilt. Uh, it just has bigger, uh, heavier axles and tires. It's a trailer that is really popular with uh, contractors. You know, in today's market, excavators and, and skid steers and tractors are uh, you know, everybody's got one and you've got to be able to haul them. You've got to be able to take it to the job. So these trailers are tough. Uh, you can beat them around. Most contractors overload them. You've got to be able to overload your trailer and not break it. And, and so we have taken great pains to make something that is indestructible. Uh, that's why we are one of the few trailer companies in the nation that offer a lifetime warranty on the structure. Now, it doesn't mean that you buy my 14K tilt bed and pull your D8 cat up on it and bend it and come back and get a new trailer. Uh, we can tell when something's been abused, but uh, frame wise and structure wise, they're, they're pretty indestructible. I, I like to tell people the weakest point on the trailer is the tires. If the tires are flat, you've got it overloaded. That's how, that's your <laughs> indicator. Right. The paint process on these trailers is pretty elaborate and it starts with sandblasting, which takes any surface rust and mill scale off of the steel and gets it ready for paint. And here it is right after sandblasting. Look at that. It's just rough. I wish you could feel this. That paint is gonna really grip a hold of that. Next, the trailers go into the paint booth. First, the seams are caulked and then it's hit with a high solids polyurethane paint which is a special paint that requires a hardener. The system itself is computerized, so it mixes up these components uh, with precision. And the spray system is electrostatic, which kind of helps suck the paint and stick it onto the trailer, avoiding waste. Next, the trailer is decked with a green dug fur and screwed down with quarter inch tech screws. 
Then it's given a coat of shingle oil, which protects the wood. It gets its new tires. It gets a final inspection. And then it is off to its forever home, which in this case is with Essential Craftsman. I can't tell you what a relief it is to have a tilt deck behind my truck, or at least it's gonna be once I buckle this thing on. Because if there's one thing that you don't wanna look in your rear view mirror and see, it's your trailer getting into trouble with your equipment. Trailers are no place to cut corners. I have a lot of friends who have this exact tilt trailer. And there are big companies, including utilities around here, who have this exact trailer. The reason it is so popular here and trailers like it are popular everywhere is because how much safer it is to load than ramps. Now you can do it with ramps. You've watched me do it with ramps. But there is nothing like being able to just shut the trailer down anywhere, park the truck, tilt the bed, roll the equipment on, whether it's heavy or light, whether it's narrow or wide, it's gonna crawl right up that deck and tie down safely. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work. Thank you for watching clear to the end of this. You can visit our website to learn more about Essential Craftsman and our membership group, Essential Craftsman Academy. And you can expect to see lots of this trailer showing up in future content. If you like this video, check out the one we made with Conveyor Application Systems, which is another great business here in Southern Oregon.